onto another form of compression in the master bus and uh, we're looking at the DCAM bus comp. It's a single or full band or full range compressor as opposed to the multi-band compression and limiting we just looked at and it really just compresses everything. So it's sort of similar to the M-Class compressor in this way that you can see in the rack. In fact, I'll just bypass that to make sure we're not compressing with two single band compressors. But you're going to be compressing everything from 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz, or maybe beyond, but every frequency you're going to be working with in your mix, essentially. So what happens generally in these compressors is that as you feed your signal through the compressor, the loudest transient or the loudest frequency in your mix is going to trigger the compression. This compressor has some tricks up its sleeve to avoid that problem or avoid problems caused by this at least. And I'll explain that as we go through the interface. So let's take a look. We've already looked at a DCAM compressor, but this one is totally geared towards bus compression. So maybe not necessarily just mastering, but maybe uh, drum bus compression as well as mastering. So first of all, we've got a nice large input meter. This is really important when mastering, of course, because we want to know that we're not clipping any of our plugins and we've got correct gain staging. Then we've got this detection circuit. And I was just saying how some compressors, indeed most single band compressors, will clamp down on every frequency. So let's imagine we've got a very loud kick drum and bass sound together not something that's uncommon in edm dance music electronic mixes and of course in other mixes as well it's some rock mixes so let's say that this is the case the single band compressor of course is going to grab onto that and it's going to clamp down on it and it's going to immediately apply gain reduction as soon as it sees this huge uh, fundamental frequency and large transient together and it's gonna clamp down on it. So what can we do to avoid it? Well, we can use this detection circuit with a high pass filter to say filter up to uh, 200 and odd Hertz. Some hardware compressors do this. What this means is that it's gonna not use these frequencies to detect the compression, but everything above it. So probably the top end of your kick, it's probably still gonna get some of that fundamental from the 4.4 or whatever it is you're working with and the snare and the low mids and the high end and everything else. So all of these transients are going to be the ones that trigger the compression. This doesn't mean it won't compress the low end. It just means that these won't be triggering the compression. So you're not going to get these really heavy pumping artifacts. Then you've got attack and release, and these are actually stepped. And this is the sort of thing you see in mastering processes because it's very repeatable. You see them ultimately, if you've got a continuously moving fader, it's hard to repeat the settings. But if you're experimenting and you're thinking, oh, which what setting is right? No, that one was better. It's easy to move back between them and combinations of them as well. The threshold moves continuously, as does the makeup gain. But the ratio, as you can see, is basically low, mid and high, 2, 4 and 10 to 1. 10 being closer to limiting. I tend to use very low ratios in mastering. On a drum bus, you probably go a little higher. Of course, you can use this with very extreme compression and high compression settings. The reason being is taking us over to the master section nicely. We've got a mix control so we can create parallel compression here very easily with our mix control. In this section as well, we've got an in gain and an out gain, some nice gain reduction metering and a saturation button for some quick dirty saturation. Nothing variable there, but just a quick saturation circuit. Again, a nice large output meter again to see our gain staging is correct after this has all been created. If we're getting clipping here, we can just bring down the makeup gain quite easily and fine tune that. So really, really simple, good stuff, bus compression, single band, and a couple of tricks to make sure that it's perfect for your master. Let's see how well it works. We're going to throw our master through it. And I'm going to show you this detection circuit in action, missing that low end as a trigger.